Hello, this is Tor from IDCON. Today, we're going to go through part number five in our series, Common Mistakes When Performing Root Cause Failure Analysis. And today, we're going to talk about not using a timeline. It's really important, in my opinion, to draw a timeline. Uh, number one, it gives you a visual of what happened, the, the sequence of events, it gives you a visual, a very quick overview of what we know about the problem so far. Um, it's very easy if we don't have a timeline to make uh, kind of brain farts. Uh, for example, uh, remember a hydraulic motor, we, we were investigating one of these days, and it was that the motor was starting to run slower, the speed of the motor was, was going down, and we were just investigating and we found that there was a leak. But after some more investigation, we noticed that the leak actually happened after the motor started to slow down. And the whole team had worked quite hard on the premises that this leak was the actual cause of the slowdown, which it can't be since the leak developed after the slowdown started. Uh, and I'm not gonna go through that investigation, but it was an, an interesting one. But we quickly saw that, of course, the leak can contribute to the speed. Um, at current state, however, it's definitely not the root cause since it happened after the actual failure or, or the problem, whatever you want to call it. As a friendly reminder, uh, there are four previous parts to this series in common mistakes when doing root cause failure analysis. And they are listed down here in the description if you want to check those out. A good idea is to stay with the object to start. The object, if you're not really clear on IDCON's philosophy, but we, we really would like to have one object and one problem, video number one, um, in a problem statement. So we don't write the whole essay because it gets very confusing. We don't know which problem to solve. A lot of times these things contain 10 problems and 10 objects. So uh, try to do the timeline to follow the object primarily. You can add other events that you're fairly sure in your hypothesis that you think that they actually belong to the problem or has causing uh, has an effect on the problem. But if it gets cluttered and or you get too many of these going on, then what I suggest is that maybe draw several timelines. So you can draw the object timeline and then you can draw some other timelines. There's two purposes of that. One, making it less cluttered. Two, to kind of use your creative thinking, help your creative thinking to think from different aspects. So typically we are stuck looking at the object and saying what happened to that object. But sometimes we need to jump out of that and think about other things. So another investigation in a steel mill, we're looking at AC motors that were failing. So they have one motor on each roll and a slab, 25 ton slab comes running through this, it's 180. 890 motors, I can't remember exactly. And some of these motors are failing. So now we looked at the motor, we picked one object um, and one problem, and start looking at that motor, and we see the slab coming over, we see the draw change, so forth and so forth. We kind of got stuck after a while, um, because there were several motors that were failing, but we're trying to focus on one at a time and see if that applies to the rest of them. Um, and what we did was, we had several timelines just to be to kind of feed the creative part so we said okay what did the operator do so we have the motor timeline which is our object but then I said operator what is the operator doing during this time what's actually happened let's follow the slab the actual product not the not the equipment but the product what happens with that etc etc so gave us uh, gave us ideas of getting more information to the problem but keeping the timeline separate so that's another way of thinking of it. Uh, in that case, uh, in the steel mill, motors failing, it seems like, should we even do root causes on that anymore? Because it seems to be the, the seals of the wrong material seems to be super common because it's hot and dirty environment. So the seals keep, keep failing and that's what it was at the end of the day. So it's not necessarily related to the timelines. So we're talking about uh, the, the parallel timelines as much, but it was a way to, to work with the parallel timeline. Um, anyways, best of luck in your root causing. Um, remember to draw a timeline. I would do it from day one and start, do the problem statement, then start doing a timeline and start putting what you know about the problem in your timeline so they come in the right sequence.
Good luck with your root causing and hope to see you here for part six in this series.